This is the Outside Film Festival. Here's Ali Carr Troxel. Every year, Team Mountain Film meets up with a few of its most intriguing guests in an interview series called Minds of Mountain Film. Within these discussions, we get to find out the inspiration behind some of the ideas and films here today. Next up, we're going to hear from Mike Fay, National Geographic Explorer and famous for his 2,000 mile trek across Africa called the Mega Transect. Welcome to Minds of Mountain Film. I'm Josh Bernstein, and my guest today is conservationist Mike Fay, who really needs no introduction, Mike. You're an old friend of Mountain Film. You are a world renowned conservationist, long distance hiker, National Geographic Explorer in Residence, Wildlife Conservation Society, longtime supporter, and now running the parks in Gabon. Uh, where should we start? I mean, what is, it seems like I could have endless questions for you. Let, Let's what, not start at the beginning. <laughs> okay, okay fair, fair enough. But uh, if we could, just go, let's go through the mega transect first, because I think that is what, what most people came to associate with you. Well, in 1997, um, we had a big war in Congo. And so we changed our base from, from uh, Brazzaville to Libreville in Gabon. And I would go to Gabon quite a bit. But also things got very kind of, um, I would just say that the war changed me mm -hmm. in a very fundamental way. And, and the way it changed me was that I realized that, that humans can just basically do anything they want whenever they want to do it. You know, you don't have to stay within the confines of, of you know, what you think is kind of normal because um, taking a transect like that is not something that most people kind of think of and um, especially you know 10 years ago that wasn't that wasn't something that people really undertook um, especially in 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 Central African forest mm -hmm. I also got really good at walking in the forest because right. I spent a hell of a lot of time um, taking these long treks but never um, a year and a half or two year long trek, maybe a month and a half or two months, but I, I had all the organizational skills to do it. And so I, I thought, well, you know, I've been living this crazy life with this war for the last two years, yeah. and, and I've done things that I never thought I would do, so I'm just gonna take a big long walk, you know, and, and I'd always wanted to do that in my life, so I thought it'd be a great way to kind of just um, really get the data that we needed to start to put together a big park system. And you're now running the, is it 13 parks that were created as a result of your mega transect? Yeah, we, we created those parks in 2002. Mm -hmm. um, President Omar Bongo um, just decided based on, on what we were showing him as far as um, what was in his country and the urgency um, of what we were dealing with because of logging coming into virtually every single forest in his country, he just decided overnight, we're gonna do this, and he did it. Mm -hmm. And then people think, well, you know, are they really gonna enforce these parks? Are they real? Are they, are they kind of um, anything other than a publicity stunt, you know? Um, if you go back there 10 years later, which I've done, and you see that, that um, in fact, there is no logging in these parks at all. And there were, they were covered with logging concessions when we made those parks. It mm -hmm. wasn't like nothing was there. It was, they were already covered with actual blocks that had been designated, but they got taken off the, off the map, you know, mm -hmm. but, but the logging hadn't arrived yet, but it was on the verge of happening. So you think, my God, that's, that's amazing because now in Gabon and, and on that entire transect line that I walked, the only virgin forest left is where there are parks today. Wow. That's how quickly it happened. Yeah. And, and the writing was on the wall. And so the fact that we got it done was one, miraculous, and two, essential to have any virgin forest left in, in any of these countries. Yeah. Because that will be the only virgin forest left in Central Africa in 10 years from now. Stuff that's in for this forest that's in parks. Uh, the writing on the wall across the planet seems to be pretty dire, as we've been discussing here at Mountain Film. What would be, and I realize that you're only empowered in, but impressively in one country, what would you, if you were empowered to make changes across the world, you mentioned in your talk yesterday morning about tithing and how people need to be coaxed to give resources to protect the planet. What, what would be your approach? Well, if I was um, the the president of every single country on earth, right. you know, yes. tomorrow, okay. all of a sudden, boom, I'm yeah. the president of every country. So I rule the world. I would very quickly um, uh, mount an emergency program 
that would make um, Obama's economic kind of bailout um, uh, kind of worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And it would be um, probably two or three times the, the kind of magnitude of what, of what he did, which from my point of view is not that much um, money. And, sure. you, and when you look at how quickly and how easily um, the U.S. government and the world was able to muster a few trillion dollars, it's like, why can't we do that for the planet? It, it just doesn't make any sense to me that, yeah. that we've got like Copenhagen going on and there is zero result from Copenhagen. Right. And that the industrial complex of the planet seems to co-opt everything anyone ever tries to do for conservation. So, so I would I would make sure that that we put in the laws that we need to make sure and to force um, everyone who uses resources to be mindful of how they impact ecosystems and to make sure that that resource base maintains its maximum productivity. And if you did that, that simple kind of process worldwide tomorrow, mm -hmm. as well as keeping you know um, protected areas protected and and keeping those intact forests intact and keeping species around and keeping creeks um, kind of flowing with pure water and keeping fish in those waters mm -hmm. and keeping the oceans full of fish and all those things we could do we right. could do them and and it would just be kind of every president deciding this is a national priority it's a it's a it's a crisis that we face and we're going to address it tomorrow right. The, I guess the trick, the challenge, the goals of places like Mount Film is to get the word out and convince people so that there's the political will to make that happen. And I guess un, until that happens, we'll have to keep keep on our soapboxes and helping spread the word. And I want to say thanks for being a Mountain Film. Thanks. And thanks it's a pleasure to watch your work, and I look forward to, <laughs> to hearing where you go next. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Catch you later.